we left the S4 in the middle of a suspension build. Coilovers, sway bars, and adjustable control arm should set this up great, but so far all we've done is put the parts on. We got a bit of fine tuning to do, starting with an issue we glanced over in the last episode, but I want to talk about today. The second we finished installing the suspension, I noticed this car's got a bit of a squat. And first things first, we need to fix this. Whenever you put a suspension on, it takes a little bit for it to settle. The car is naturally going to get lower. So the day after I installed the suspension was not the day to adjust the ride height. It might be overkill, but with my schedule, it made sense to let the car sit for a week while it compressed. Setting the ride height now would be pointless since after it compresses, I'd have to do it again. I did deviate from that just a little bit though. I didn't want the car to sit that entire time with an uneven ride height front to rear. So I decided to lower the front to be even with the rear. My thought was that if it was sitting evenly, it would compress evenly. With the coilovers, adjusting ride height couldn't be easier. The first step is to ignore the top two collars. Those effectively lock in the preload of the spring. As you might have noticed, the lower half of the coilover is also threaded. There's a nut on the bottom of the body and a collar on the top. If you loosen both of these, you can spin this black outer piece right or left, and it will shorten the length or lengthen it depending on which way you twist it, exactly like tightening a bolt. Sometimes it can be a little tight, so you might want to use the spanner they give you to spin it. That's really as simple as it gets for how you're going to raise or lower each corner of the car. We'll talk about the side effects that has here in a little bit, as well as how to precisely measure what you're changing. For today though, the only goal was just to get the front sitting relatively at the same height as the rear so it compressed equal. Dampening isn't the focus of today's episode, but you might remember from the last episode that the adjustment screw for the rear suspension is located inside this metal part that's bolted to the car. BC's guide said that you need to drill a hole into this, and honestly, at the time, I didn't know if that was normal. I did some research, and I think in this case, we're going to trust BC and drill the hole. You'll notice I'm using almost no pressure and moving the angle of the drill around a lot. Most times, I would not suggest this, but in this case, I want to drill the hole as slowly as possible. I don't want to risk the drill shooting through and damaging the suspension. And if you're wondering how I placed this, BC provides a template. With the holes drilled, we'll now be able to adjust dampening once the car's aligned. And we're good to let the car sit for a week and compress. At the time, I didn't think it would compress very much. I mean, the TT didn't change like crazy, but different car and different parts. So coming back to this car, it is really hard to communicate just how low it is. It's kind of on the ground, and I don't know if I really want to keep it that low. It looks great, but functionally, I'm going to have to drive it and see if we actually like it at this height before we decide if we want to keep it there. Here's an example of how low it actually is. Two and a half inches off the ground. Not good. I guess you could say this car got a little bit lower than expected. Without even really leaning over all that much, I'm able to touch the ground in the driver's seat. It's so low. By comparison, I have the TT, which has a similar suspension setup. In this car, I have to actually lean over to touch the ground. The crazy thing is that the ride height's almost five inches higher in the TT. And that's not a high car. Considering the TT scrapes in a few places in town, I don't know if the S4 is really gonna be drivable, especially with it being a static suspension. I will say it does look rather good though. 
If you haven't gathered this by now, I'm more of a functional fitment kind of guy. I like fitments that are usable and cars that you can actually drive around town and not have to go alternative routes to avoid a specific ramp or an incline. Walking up to this car today, it took me more than a couple minutes to get accustomed to just how low the front of the car was. The headlights sit a little lower than my kneecap now, which is really bizarre, especially when I'm used to them being about four inches higher before we did the suspension. The biggest concern right now is the exhaust, which sits at about two and a half inches of ground clearance. I don't know if that's gonna quite cut it. As good as this looks, I want it to be functional first and I wanna be able to drive the car, so we're gonna raise it up a bit. So now let's actually set ride height. Let's get the car in the air again first with the trusty vintage jack. Oh yeah. With the car sinking even more, this jack can't even fit. Guess we're gonna have to pivot a bit. It's always a fun day when you have an excuse to buy a new tool. In this case, a problem I created entirely by myself. This is a low profile jack and it should fix our problem. I don't know the exact age of the old jack, but it was a hand-me-down from my grandfather and it's what I learned to change a tire on on my first car. So it means a lot to me. I'm gonna refurbish it for fun, but I'll most likely still use it for stuff too. I will say it might be nice learning to use a jack made within the last four decades. I guess it works. With the jack properly tested, let's see if it fixes our issue. Look at that, like butter. This might be a little goofy to people who've used a jack like this their entire life, but it's kind of a pretty cool upgrade to me. Back to the subject at hand though, adjusting the suspension. First and foremost, my goal is to raise the car to roughly the same ride height as the TT. If you're not on level ground, you can't actually use the wheel gap to determine if it's equal right to left. So the best way to do that is to either make sure the amount of thread is equal side to side or make sure you're adjusting in equal increments side to side. I opted to go in increments and I used the spanner, which is exactly four millimeters, to measure the distance that I was changing it each time I adjust to the ride height. After a couple times, all in all, I raised this side about an inch, and then I went to replicate it on the other side, focusing only on the front for now. And the only real difference mechanically in the process of raising the car versus lowering it is the direction that you spin the shock body. So it's actually a really quick process to adjust the ride height. That doesn't mean you can just change it on the fly and drive the car though. Ride height directly affects your alignment spec. I'm talking toe and camber specifically. So every time you mess with ride height, you're gonna need to get the car properly aligned. Otherwise, it's gonna be all over the place. I don't like paying for things multiple times when I really only need to once. So my goal is to get the ride height set exactly where I want the car to be and then get it aligned. That way, I should only have to pay to get it aligned once. I mean, how hard could getting this car actually aligned be? And if that's not foreshadowing, then I don't know what is. With the ride height in the front a little higher, we need to talk about the rear. I'm gonna raise it up as well. Honestly, I think the rear would easily clear the fenders without rubbing. However, that exhaust is just simply too close to the ground. Even if we just raise it up a little bit, anything is gonna help. The rear coilovers look different than the front, but the adjusting process is roughly the same. It's a same process, different looks kind of thing. You still have to unlock the very bottom collar, but that's pretty much all you have to unlock. Just like the front, the whole thing has to spin except for the bottom. That way it can screw in or screw out, changing your ride height. You are going to have to use a spanner on the top collar though in order to get this to spin because it's a lot more stuck. Remember, back here is under pressure, so that makes sense. I ended up raising the rear roughly 8 millimeters, and once we set the car down, you can see this is a lot more functional of a ride height. And it's still low enough to look a lot better than it did. Time to replicate it on the other side.
so the rear is finally set and it is a lot better. I can fit my whole hand between the wheel and the tire, which is a lot better than it was before. The front, however, is sitting a bit higher than the rear. I want the wheel gap to be the same front to back, so... I think we're going to lower the front just a shade so we've got just about the same amount of clearance as the TT does and we'll go from there. Setting ride height gets a little confusing when you're doing it on uneven ground, but it is doable. You just need to account for that. The main difference is using the wheel gap to measure ride height is not how you should do it when the ground is uneven because it puts unequal pressure on each part of the suspension. So the right could just be compressed more than the left. So a good rule of thumb for this is whenever you're trying to set ride height for your car, compare the length of the coilover side to side, as opposed to the wheel gap when sitting on the ground. I spent a good amount of time trying to perfect the ride height front and rear. I wanted it as equal as possible before we actually got the car aligned. I figured putting all this effort in now would really help down the line. I'm taking my time with this because I want to learn to do it right. And I think it's going to pay off in the end. The cool part though, is with this ride height set, we're getting ready for our first drive. I look like a mess right now, but I've been out here for a long time, so excuse that. Either way. I really like the height. I think this is a good balance of being drivable and being low enough to actually warrant putting a suspension on. Honestly making me want to lower the TT slightly. The issue though is the lowest point in that car is in the middle of the chassis versus the lowest point in this car is on the back. I thought about it for a bit and I think at this newer ride height I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable actually driving the car around. Having two and a half inches of clearance in the rear is really not that nice and even if we just raised it up by about an inch it's gonna make a difference I think and I can actually get a normal jack under it rather than just the low profile one I bought so I think all good things we're still two inches lower wheel gap wise than what we were at so the car still looks really good and we're gonna get all the benefits of the new suspension two things we still have to do one we need to talk about dampening because I immediately notice an issue sitting in the car and I want to show it to you real quick when I shake the car there's quite a bit of an echo with the shake as the suspension currently sits, just getting in and out of the car, you notice just how bouncy it is. And this is entirely due to dampening. Dampening is basically the way your suspension responds to bumps. You can make it stiffer and you can make it softer. The front and rear are currently neutral. This was pretty bouncy just getting into the car, so we're gonna stiffen it a bit. We're gonna take this car to a fun road to properly tune dampening. We'll drive the road a lot and adjust it on the fly until we get the car properly set up. But for us to do that right, an alignment has to come first. For now though, stiffening it was the right move. And with that, the shake's better. So we can take it for a drive and see if there's any issues. And I think where I want to go is the car wash because it's close by and it'll be fun. At this point, it had actually been a little bit since I had driven this car. With my current work schedule, I really only get to work on my cars two days a week. So when I plan things out, sometimes they take a couple weeks and the suspension wasn't really an exception. I'd love nothing more than being able to spend more time on the cars and videos someday. But for now, I'm just grateful I'm able to make consistent progress on them. Well, let's go. From my observations, life likes to repeat itself, and there's a lot of moments that seem to just be identical to moments that have maybe already happened, and maybe are going to happen again in the future. This was one of them. If you've watched this series from the beginning, you'll know what I'm talking about. We bought the car broken and had it towed to where we put the suspension on today. And after a couple weeks, we took it on its first drive, a route which we just replicated, ending in this car wash. I think it would be a little bit of an understatement to say this car is quite a bit different now. And it's moments like these that make me really grateful to be able to breathe new life into something like this. A car that really deserves to be treated well and taken care of. And the coolest part is this car still has a long ways to go. But that doesn't mean we can't take a second to appreciate just how far it's come. After the wash, we took the car on a bit more of a drive. We made our way over to the park that we went to right before we put on the suspension for a proper comparison. The car desperately needs an alignment, so I can't really comment too much on how it drives compared to how it did. But we can, however, compare how it looks at the new ride height with how it used to look before we put on the suspension. And I'm going to let the car speak for itself first.
As you can see, the fitment is night and day better. We had almost four inches wheel gap and now it's nearly flush. And the best part is on the drive, it didn't rub whatsoever. I seriously can't understate just how much better this car looks at the new ride height. It makes the car a lot more aggressive and substantial. It really adds to the overall impression that the car leaves. I'm starting to really like how it looks and I think with some proper wheels, it's gonna get even better. Not to mention, as soon as we get an alignment and have the suspension properly set up from a dampening perspective, man, this thing is gonna perform night and day better too. Even with a bad alignment, you can just tell that this car is gonna be way more planted, and I can't wait to realize its potential. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. I've got a lot planned for my channel and projects in the future, and right now that's the best way you can help support me. Anyways, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you again, have a wonderful day.